All right, we are here at my outdoor urban worm bag and looking on the lid, it is damp. And that's good because one of the things I'm going to talk about here is moisture. And we are still just having to put a little bit of these water bottles in here just to keep it a little bit cool as the temperatures are dropping, but they're still a little warm. So one of the things you're going to notice is we have a huge gap from here to here. And that's because about 19 days ago, we harvested, we got 22.6 pounds out of this urban worm bag. And that really lowered the level from here but this thing is still about three-fourths of the way full so when we were in here last we put a lot of food scraps in fact we put a bunch of banana peels some lettuce strawberries some cranberries some avocado peels pumpkin from the jack-o-lanterns we had carved and of course we added our amendments and then on top of that we put this layer of shredded cardboard and then we just kind of put some of this junk bedding on here so what I'm gonna do is kind of dig in and kind of see where the castings layer is and it is pretty close to the surface. I mean, look at that. I dig in and we've got lots of worms right in there and they are making all kinds of great castings. See worm, worm, worm right in here, all kinds of worms. So they have made a great layer in here and it's really moist, which is great because one of the things we did was we put a lot of dry bedding in and then we had to mist it. But something I want to talk about is kind of the three things that I have to deal with with moisture with my bins and probably you do too. So the first thing I think about with moisture is is when I'm starting a new worm bin. When I am starting a new worm bin, almost all the bedding that I have in here is just straight cardboard shreds. And there is no like castings, the worms haven't eaten through it. So it does not retain moisture very well. It'll soak up some moisture, but then it'll just kind of dry out. And what happens over the course of a bin's life, the worms create more and more castings. And one of the great things about castings is they retain water. You can see how kind of light and fluffy this is right here. But let me dig down a little bit and we're gonna get into some castings and you can see it is really wet. I mean, I mash it together and it's kind of like a almost not a mud ball. It kind of still crumbles, but it is definitely more moist. And that is because worm castings really retain their moisture. So when you're starting off a worm bin, you are going to need to add in damp bedding. You don't want to just put in dry bedding that you kind of sometimes see me do. And real quick, I want to point out that we've got a cranberry right here. And these I've been told are going to take a while. In fact, this one has not been burst. So I'm going to burst it and that might help it, but they do have some antimicrobial properties, so hopefully they're not gonna take too long in my bin. But one of the things I'm dealing with now is kind of the seasonality of the moisture within my bins. So all through the summer, you saw me just putting in dry bedding, and then you saw me putting on top of that food scraps, and that was just fine because the food scraps got it wet, and then the humidity from it being summer here in Florida kept the bedding and everything moist. In fact, if you've ever come to Florida on an airplane, it's like a warm hug greet you with the humidity when you step off that airplane. But right now we are kind of in the dry period. We haven't had rain in probably a month. So this bin has been drying out and I've been having to mist it constantly. So when we put our bedding in today, we are just going to put in damp bedding. We are not going to put in any dry bedding. And here is an avocado, which we'll see if there's any worms in there. And sure enough, never disappoints. Anytime I've got a avocado peel like this, there's always worms hiding out in there. I love it. So I'm really impressed how things are doing in here. I was a little afraid when we got so many castings out that perhaps I took out too much and then next time we, you know, we're going to harvest that we would have just a lot of, you know, big things or bedding or food in there. But I don't think that's going to be the case. I think the worms are really populating in here. I did take some out for my son's vermi hut. We got him a new vermi hut because he is newly married. They've got a little condo and they've been saving their food scraps. But this bin, everywhere I go, just all kinds of great worms. I mean, just like that one right there. And then this one right here. And then, you know, this one right here, I just, I just love them. I absolutely love looking at all these worms. So I think we're doing pretty good. I think what we can do is just kind of leave this layer right here, just like this. And then what we'll do is maybe put a little bit down and then we're going to put a lot of food in here. So like I said, I have been having to wet down my bedding. And because this is a massive worm bin, I've got a cooler filled with damp bedding here. So I may be making a mess, but I'm just going to have to dig from the side and put it in here and we'll just vacuum up whatever mess I have on the outside here. So this kind of leads me to the third thing that I kind of think about with regards to moisture, and that is what kind of food do you feed your worm bin? If you're feeding a lot of lettuce like this and a lot of melon, then your worm bin is going to get a lot of moisture in it. And that's good if you've got kind of a drier worm bin. But if all you're feeding is bread and beans and worm chow, that kind of thing, then 
you got to kind of be thinking about how is my worm bin going to get some of that moisture that it needs? Are you going to have to dampen your bedding before you put it in? Are you going to need to mist it? That kind of thing. Just some considerations as you're monitoring your worm bin. And here is a big fat apple. It is mostly frozen. I really need to put an entry point in. So we'll see if that helps them at all. So the other thing is you can run into all three. You could have a situation where you're just starting your worm bin in, oh my gosh, this is, uh, this is what happens when the executive producer tells you that you cannot put three pumpkins into a freezer. You're going to have to cut them up and you just kind of do it randomly and throw them in the freezer. This is a one gallon bag and this is frozen. And, uh, there is a lot of liquid that's come out as I've tried to thaw it out. So this might, this might be a little bit of an issue, but I have a mortar tray down below if anything leaks out. Oh boy, there we go, right there. So yeah, if you are just starting a worm bin and you're having kind of seasonal changes where it's more dry or the humidity is less or all of a sudden your heater or your air conditioning is working more and it's kind of ripping the humidity out of the air within your house and you're really gonna need to think about, you know, what are you gonna do for moisture? How are you gonna kind of monitor it? Maybe even check in on your worm bin more often which usually for a worm farmer is not something you need to tell them because we all like to chuck in our worm bins a lot. So, oh gosh, this is... This is not ideal. <laughs> if you are going to save pumpkin, you probably want to save it in something flat or thaw it out better than I did because this is just a hunk of ice right here, which I'm going to put to the side, put more bedding, and then put this on top, I think. I'm going to get a little assist here from the executive producer. All right, good. Oh my gosh. This is definitely needed after all that pumpkin that we had in here, but... We'll start with this kind of layer right here, and then I'll put some shredded cardboard on here as well. But yeah, this is this is a lot of food, but I wanted to put a lot of food because it's been 21 days since we fed it, 19 since we harvested. And luckily, we are getting into kind of our cooler period where even if this heats up, it's not going to be a problem. It's also a very deep bin, so the worms can flee down if they need to. All right, let's see how well I can do this. Oh, hitting the lights. Let's see. There we go. It's snowing! Yay! It's snowing in Florida. Oh, a little bit of a mess up here, but there we go. Lots of bedding, covering that up. Always important to cover your bedding, or I'm sorry, cover your food with carbon. That'll help keep any kind of critters out and keep the smell away from them. And boom, in goes the pumpkin. Oh shoot, we forgot amendments. Oh crap. I guess it's going on the pumpkin part. Yeah. Another save by the executive producer. We're we'll put in some of our amendments. This is the worm chow. And then we'll throw some coffee on it as well. And we can put coffee everywhere. It really doesn't matter. And then finally some eggshell grit. Again, put it all over. All right. Now we are absolutely ready to bury this pumpkin up with all kinds of bedding. We're going to give it everything that I have in this cooler. And you can see even with all this bedding and all this food that I put in here, we are still, we still got a couple inches all the way around so we cannot be slacking here we're gonna have to get in here in another 10 days or so and feed it so that we can keep on track to try and get 15 pounds of castings every month and get to our 180 pounds of castings in this urban worm bag And for good measure, I'm just gonna miss the top because like I said, we are in our dry season here in Florida. And we're also gonna be monitoring the bottom because we did put in all that pumpkin juice. And you know, even though this bin is big, just because you pour in liquid doesn't mean that it's gonna go universally all around into all the contents. It could just gravity feed right below, right into the uh, mortar tray that I have down there. So I hope this video has kind of helped you think about the moisture and kind of the times that you wanna be looking out for it. When you first start a bin, when the seasons change and then when you're kind of feeding a lot of one food like a bunch of melons and lettuce or a bunch of worm chow or bread that kind of thing so just take those steps that I talked about when it comes to adding more liquid and by liquid I really mean moisture so I hope you're having a great day I hope your worm bins are doing well so happy vermicomposting everybody take care now <music>